Hey, Coach J, come into my office. Close the door behind you. Hey, how's it going, Tom? What's going on? So, I know it was a tough decision to get rid of your defensive coordinator, but I really believe in Ethan Aguayo. He's a young coach. He's doing pretty good, and I do want to see him improve, though. And we have some important games coming up versus Navy and Tulsa. We definitely want to stop the run, especially versus Navy. So make sure to talk to Ethan. I know he's kind of the rookie coach, but just kind of boost his ego a little bit. You know, let him know that, you know, the, the university is behind him and, uh, you know, we're in full support of him. We just need to let him know that, you know, he's here to stay. Sure thing, Tom. You know, I got, I got it here at the coaching level. You know, you don't have to worry about me. You know, I can handle my coaches. You kind of be the guy that over oversees everything. And, you know, we have a pretty good relationship, so... You know, anytime you need to come and talk to me about anything like that, uh, just come and talk. You know, you don't have to be uh, cutthroat or anything. You know, these guys are still developing. This is a young coaching staff. Just remember that. Got it, Jay. Sometimes, you know, I'm not in the day-to-day -day stuff, so I don't really see everything. So it's good. It's good to hear that from you. Good to hear. Hey, coach, before we go out into the field, I need to talk to you for a second. Hey, coach, what's up? So, your first couple games have been pretty good. I just want to tell you that you've been doing a good job, you know, corralling this defense and getting them to believe in the new concepts. I got to admit it. We've been better stopping the run, and, you know, we just want to get better. Let's, let's, let's try to force a couple of turnovers these next couple games, and honestly, that'll look very, very well to Tom because he's, he, he's really been trying to build this program up from the ground up. He's been doing a good job giving me a lot of leeway so he wants to see some improvement though let's let's get a couple turnovers all right coach i'm gonna do what i can and throw in some new concepts blitz a little more you know uh use a little cover zero cover one a little more we'll see you know i i don't know about this navy team though they can run the ball this is a team that is probably the toughest in the nation to stop besides georgia tech so we're gonna have our hands full but i'm up to the challenge Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the White Tails Dynasty, a story of football and beyond. This is going to be a new cinematic experience for you guys, and it's going to be a lot of fun. In this series now, you will see player personalities, on-the-field drama, off-the-field drama, you're going to see superstars. You're going to see guys coming up from the depth chart and earning their spots on the team. It's going to be a whole lot of a lot of good content in this series. So let's get going. We do have a task at hand. Stopping Navy and this rushing defense with Ethan Aguayo's first big test as defensive coordinator. So here's a handoff up the middle. There's Nelson Smith. And remember, they have Kaysom Hill at quarterback, who was their quarterback last year. He ran all over us in their first matchup. But here, we have to focus on Nelson Smith. He's getting a couple carries up the middle for a couple of first downs. Here he is once again, another big hole up the middle. That's 13 yards for Nelson Smith. And he's got a big first down. So now at the 25-yard line. This time, Marvin Woods is in for the first tackle, and there Derek Impito cleans it up. And here we are, second and 11. Here's another handoff. Smith up the middle, 11-yard gain. And, man, this triple option, you might stop it for one play, but doing it, doing it consistently, it's very, very tough. So here Amir Lee gets the three-yard carry as he moves the ball to about the 11-yard line. Hand off to Smith on a second and nine. This time fighting off a tackler. He gets in for the touchdown, 11 yards out. And now they go on the board 7-0, and they take this seven-point lead. So here is Adam Miller out onto the field on the first drive for this offense. Throw out to the right side. That's Rodney Ross, gain of 13. So now another third down conversion. This time throw to the sideline. There is Chris Coretta keeping both feet in bounds on that one. Only needs one in college, but it's a first down nonetheless. So now third and seven, another third down. Throw across the middle. Marlin, there he is, 11 yards, and he's inside the five with that catch as now we're set up inside the 10-yard line. Here's a throw to the right side. There's Chris Coretta, touchdown for the freshman. And man, how impressive have, has this guy been? He gets on the board, 7-7. So now, here is Navy back out onto the field. Hill, under center. We got him finally to a third down. 
deep shot to the end zone, and it's going to be caught Bruh. in the end zone by their receiver. Ryan Robinson just lost track of the ball in deep coverage, and Kaysom Hill, he's two of three for a touchdown, and now they take the 14 to seven lead. So here is Adam Miller with a quick, quick throw across the middle. There's Chris Coretta again on the following drive as we start the second quarter with a nice throw. So here is Howard Vincent lined up at running back this time. He gets a carry up the middle and he's got a gain of eight yards and a first, almost a first down. So now second and two. Here's Jabari Blaze getting going in the running game. He's got four yards to the left side and a first down. So now here on a second and 10, throw out to the right side. There's Marlon Yarbrough trying to spin away after a 15 yard catch, but he gets tackled, but it's a first down. Way to hold on. So here's Jabari Blaze trying to get going in the running game, using his stiff arm, finally getting five yards. I want to get Jabari Blaze going with this offense as he's been pretty quiet up to this point. A couple of good games, but not really. Here is Miller running out to the right side. Here's a 10 yard scramble to the right side. You know he's got the wheels as he is a dual threat quarterback. He can also throw the ball pretty well. But here on third down, here's Jacoby Beck in the game and in the slot, three yards. But here we line up to go for it. Fourth and three, throw to left side. There's Howard Vincent lined up at receiver on the outside. Remember Rodney Ross has taken his spot on the depth chart, but that's a first down. So here is Jabari Blaze inside the goal line trying to get a first down, but he gets stopped. So now third and goal. This time, Miller's going to scramble out to the right side. He gets tripped up from behind, and he's sacked for a loss of five. And we do have to settle for the field goal here as we move on to the second half. So here is Miller with the throw to the left side. This time, he's got Rodney Ross, who's on the outside. 15-yard gain and a first down. So here is Miller. On a third and nine, throw it to the middle of the field. And there's Jacoby Beck with a great adjustment to the ball. That ball was actually thrown to Howard Vincent on the outside, but somehow Jacoby Beck makes a great adjustment and comes up with the catch. So here he is lined up in the backfield, but this time he's not going anywhere. That's a loss of about six yards. So now third and 16, pressure's right up the middle. We're going to throw the ball deep, and it's going to be picked off. And it's picked off by Dawson. Marlon Yarbrough was the intended target. Did not jump for it at all. And Navy takes back over after that turnover. So now we fast forward into the middle of the third quarter. Navy just moving the ball down the field every drive. Here's a draw play. Mitchell in the game. And that's their receiver in at running back, Ryan Mitchell. And he gets the carry up the middle for the touchdown. But we do come away with some bad news. After that interception, Adam Miller took a big hit, has a bruised sternum, and he's going to be out for the entire game here with a minute, actually a quarter and a half left. So here comes the backup quarterback. In comes Trayvon Davis. Throw across the middle. There's Chris Coretta still getting going no matter who the quarterback is. That's a gain of 20 yards. So now towards the end of the third quarter, here's a quick throw out to the left side. There's Coretta again. He's getting to the first down marker. That's a gain of seven. It's been all Chris Coretta in this game. So here is Davis with the throw to the left side. This time, Jacoby Beck juking his way forward. He's got about a 10-yard gain and a first down. So now we fast forward a little bit inside the 20 now. Throw across the middle. Here's Marlon Yarbrough getting three. Not enough for the first down, but you know us. We're going for it. Fourth and one. Down by two scores. This time, Davis, he's a pocket passer, but he's going to roll out to the left side, pick up the first down, sliding at about the 10-yard line, and he picks up the first. So now seven minutes left here in this game. Here is Davis scrambling out to the right side. Has nobody to throw it to. He's going to take it himself, and he's diving for the pylon. Touchdown, 10 yards out, Trayvon Davis. And that is his first touchdown of his season and maybe even his career. I'm not sure if he scored in the first season at all. So here we go for it on a two-point conversion, running out to the right side, but that was just a bad decision on that one, and we end up missing that conversion. So now later in the fourth quarter, Navy does score again, back down by 12. But look at Marlon Yarbrough going up and getting this one in traffic. And wow, no words can be said about Marlon Yarbrough. That guy is just amazing. So now at about the 15-yard line, this time Davis throws out to the right side. He's got Chris Coretta, spins forward, gets pushed out of bounds inside the five-yard line, showing some athleticism. He's over 100 yards with that catch and run. 
So now inside the five, under center, this time Davis throws across the middle. He's got Jacoby Beck for his first receiving touchdown of his career. Remember last episode, he did have his first running touchdown, this time his first receiving touchdown. So now we get under two minutes left here in this game. Here's a third and two carry for Navy, and we stop Amir Lee for a one-yard gain. And we decide to actually sim this next play, but take a look. They actually missed the 32-yard oh field goal. God. Usually we play those, but we just decided to speed the game up a little bit, sim that play, and they miss. So now, 40 seconds left. We have a chance to win this game. Here's a throw to the right side. Here is Chris Coretta on the sideline. That is a gain of 15 yards and a first down. So now, first and 10, 30 seconds left. This time, the pressure's getting to us, and we don't get rid of it. That's a loss of 12 yards. The young Trayvon Davis doesn't have much experience. He takes the big loss. So now, third and 22, this time, buying some time. Going to get rid of it, but he gets hit on the throw, and that's going to bring it to a fourth and 22. Can Trayvon Davis pull a rabbit out of his hat? This time, pressure's right there in his face. He has no time to get rid of it. Loss of 11 yards, and that's how this one ends. 28 to 23. We had an opportunity to make a fourth quarter drive that time, and we just could not do it, and we come away with the loss here versus Navy. And actually, Davis didn't have a bad game throwing the ball. Five incompletions, but we just did not run the ball well at all. And I want to see something better out of Jabari Blaze. But Chris Corretto goes over 100 yards once again. 12 receptions, 126 and a touchdown. That's not bad. And then Tucker Oconquo leads our team in tackles, but no sacks because they don't really throw the ball too much. We didn't really turn the ball over at all, really. So... We had to kind of force fumbles in order to get turnovers, but our rush defense didn't do too bad. You see the stats right there from Navy. They didn't do all that well running the ball. But after the game, we get some good news. Brad Robinson, who we've been looking for a defensive tackle to commit to our team, a good one, he commits, but we get some bad news. Speck Myers, who I thought was gonna be maybe a starter coming in next year, he commits to Toledo. And then we have a couple of other commits here with Victor Dimitri, and Blake Childress, the twin linebackers, those are going to be some good guys in the future to develop. And then Andy Jones at cornerback, the Juco cornerback, he's going to come in and contribute right away. Hey, coach, it looks like I got some bad news going into this Tulsa game. Um, it looks like quarterback Adam Miller has not recovered fully from his injury. He gave it a go in practice, but it just seems like he's just not right. I'm not willing to put him out on the field and kind of aggravate his injury. So I would probably look at other options going into, into next game. And I just don't think it's smart if you go ahead and play Miller this game. <sighs> Thanks, Doc. Uh, this is a tough game. We got to win this game. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, all right, let me let me just think about it. Let me talk to my coaching staff a little bit and see what I can do. Uh, I don't. Thanks, Doc. I, I, I'll think about it. Uh, you're a good doctor. I trust you, so thanks for the opinion. Hey, Adam, come into my office really quick. Hey, Coach, what's up? So uh, I'm actually going to give Trayvon Davis a start next game. And the medical staff just does not think you're ready. And I think it's a good idea. You know, don't want to aggravate the injury at all. And honestly, you know, we do. We will need you down the stretch. And we want to do a little bit of quarterback evaluation. You're not in jeopardy of losing your job just yet. But it is a competition. Remember, you know, we aren't the greatest team right now. But we do want to start winning. And we want to start winning now. And the smart thing to do here is to sit you out get you some rest, you know, heal up your body, and get ready for next week. Coach, I, f I feel fine, but I guess I respect your decision. Uh, Trayvon's been working his tail off behind me, and he's been doing pretty well in practice. I can't I can't even be mad at my guy getting his opportunity to, to start and uh, get his opportunity to shine. I'm happy for him, but I I'm good to go. I, I promise I'm good to go. But if you decide to change your mind, I'm always ready to hop on the field. Hey, Davis, let's talk real quick. Hey, Coach, what's up? So you've been doing a lot of run with the ones this week, and we decided to give you the call this game. So you will be starting. Adam just isn't healed up from his injury, and we're not going to give him any type of go in this game, probably sitting him out the entire game because, you know, we want him to heal up a little bit. But this is your shot, and we've been working with you all week. Let's see what you got. 
Adam looked fine in practice, Coach. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's up with the medical staff, but I think they've been holding a grudge against him or something. I don't, I don't know. That's not your damn job to worry about the medical staff. Worry, worry about the game. I'm giving you a shot to start. Let's see what you got, kid. All right, Coach, this is what I've been training for. And last year, I didn't get my shine as much. But this time, I'm not going to disappoint you, Coach. I promise. Well, Tulsa has one of the worst pass defenses in the nation, so we're going to look to spread the ball out. We know you're more of a pocket passer, so get rid of the ball quickly to Chris and Marlon because those guys are going to be your friends this game. And then don't forget about Rodney on the outside. He's been shining. And then when Fabian comes in, make sure to get him the ball. He gets open in pressure situations, doesn't really drop too many passes. Make sure to spread the ball out, and we'll see what you got, kid.